<laughs> Hello and welcome everybody to these Building Smart Room improvised session as part of the Building Smart International Standards Summit Rome 2023. Thank you for joining. My name is Evandro and I will be your moderator for today, if you don't mind. Uh, today's session is titled Update on Delta's Initiative. You will see it's an improvised session. Uh, we are still looking for the speaker. Uh, so the speaker that you will hear from was supposed to be Greg, but you will hear from Passi at least, uh, which is a good news. The session is scheduled to last one and a half hour. Let's see. <laughs> and the session is being recorded and it will be made available to the replay session of the event as soon as possible. Before I hand over to our speaker, I would like to remind you that this is a hybrid event. For online attendees, your microphones will remain muted for the duration of this event. Uh, if you wish to ask a question, please use the chat box in the control panel. For those in the room, please try to keep background noise to a minimum and raise your hand if you wish to make a comment or ask a question. I would also like to bring your attention to the Building Smart Code of Conduct. Building Smart is committed to ensure the participation in the development of standards is unrestricted and that the process for the adoption is transparent. The standards that are developed do not favor any particular provider and are open, non-binding and accessible to all. Please take note of our antitrust code of conduct. So now I would like to hand over to Passi without further ado to, and thanks Passi for improvising this session. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm Pasi Pasi from Solibri, and uh, uh, this uh, IFC Delta thing has been something that has been uh, in discussions for for quite some time. Um, so this started some years ago when uh, I mean Solibri has had a like online connection with with Archicad for many two decades, I would say. Uh, the previous connection was, was such that in Solipri we did a, a, an Archicad add-on and then it sent the data in our kind of own format to Solipri on desktop, uh, like the communication happened uh, like over, over sockets. Um, then some years back, we discussed with, with Graphisoft about this again the the add-on that we had deal, developed was always a burden to maintain and it was never as good as IFC. Uh, so we want, wanted to get the, the fidelity of, of the, the model to the same level as, as IFC is. So, so we decided that we would go with IFC. But of course, the, our, our plugin that we had developed on, on uh, Archicad was efficient when it was like uh, sending new stuff over so that was a dilemma that if we would always send the full IFC then it was it would be like cumbersome and slow so we decided to to develop uh, uh, this kind of Delta IFC uh, with Graphisoft and uh, and it worked well uh, that's a credit to Graphics of we like cannot take any credit of credit for that, but uh, the the concept concept worked, and these de delta files are basically like full IFC files, and you have to so you could import them as as such, but of course they only have like the modified components, and uh, so we just. When Archicad sends the, the Delta file, it also sends information that this is like a partial update, not a full update. <clears throat> and in, in addition to that, uh, that file, there is like additional information that uh, what is the version of this, this uh, Delta and also Libre maintains the version that it has. So, Archicad first asked Solipri that which version you have, and then uh, 
if the version is the same that Archicast has previously exported, then they can send the delta, and if, if not, they will send the, the full IFC. And uh, in addition to, the, to that delta, Archicast also sends uh, components that have been deleted. So that comes like outside of the IFC uh, file. So uh, we were discussing that this could be something that we could standardize. And uh, actually already some years ago, go like proposed that we, this would be something that uh, the group that is doing the BCF and Documents API, that, that could be done. But that group was busy with those standards. So Greg wanted to take this, this over and uh, he's been working on it uh, together with Angel and some other people. And uh, I've also chipped uh, my, my uh, comments. So we wanted to put all the inform this meta information that uh, is needed for, for this uh, in the IFC file. So basically we are adding things in the header uh, that what is, for example, the model. Uh, so model has an identity and then there's a version and the, the components that have been deleted that that information would be in the in the uh, uh, header and then <clears throat> the receiving software can like get that information and then update the file and also if you get like several uh, update files then the receiving application can with that information can import them in the in the correct order uh, so that is the the basic thing I can maybe check some of my emails if I have missed something and uh, this is kind of uh, not very elegant but on the other hand we have shown that it works and the idea is that if you for example change a name of a, of a room you don't need to send the full IFC you can just send the uh, the modified the 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 one one challenge there is that when you modify something you need need to export also all the components that are related to that so because the receiving application the assumption is that you get all the relations uh, so if you for example add a an opening to a wall. So you just cannot send an, the opening. You need to send the opening and the wall and also the connected wall. So it might be like a kind of unnecessarily large delta, but it's still much smaller than the full, full file. In an in a unhappy case, it might be, the delta might be quite large, but uh, majority of the cases the Delta phase. Oh, there the man. Oh, <laughs> where have you been? Yeah, yeah. I have been. I've been ad libbing here. <laughs> we improvise. Yeah, don't worry. Take your time. Yeah. Just one one thing. Do you have a presentation on a, on a USB drive, or do you want to plug your laptop? The first is the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> you you have your yeah USB drive. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, we need you to log on the platform. We'll take a little bit of time. Yeah, as you as you like, Greg. Yeah, just mm. just maybe take this time to see if the audience at least understand the context of the of the, of the whole thing. If this Delta initiative is clear, if you have any questions about the scope and the major use case that drove this initiative, is that clear, or we need to stress it? Mm -hmm. Clear. Okay. So we have nothing to. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I I've gone through the like the basics. Uh, I haven't gone to the details. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe like the header format and those kind of and the, the manifest file and those things uh, I haven't discussed. Okay. So I mean, you you went over the fact that the the 
there's two reasons to do this, or really three reasons. We sort of talked through yesterday. So there's export speed, import speed, and then transmission speed. Yeah. So we yeah. went through those. Uh, maybe I, yeah, maybe I didn't, I wasn't too clear about those. So, so those yeah. are the main reasons to do this project. It's not trying to uh, solve a whole, t a whole lot of things, but it's trying to solve those specific things. So the idea that it takes a long time to export, uh, and then the main request actually was re-brought back up by Dassault because their their example is I get a you know a terabyte not terabyte a gigabyte IFC file and there's only like a, a very small amount of changes and you want to update it and then on the CDE side we've had discussions around how it's packaged and it. It really wants to allow for small updates to be sent via CDE and those sort of things as well. Mm. So that's the that's the context. I take these off because I didn't realize I was late until I walked into the door. So sorry. <laughs> I was thinking this was at one thirty. Um, do we have markers? Yeah, digital, digital. Yeah, so. uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as uh, I can put. We can pull up the documents. Is who's plugged in? I can email them. Do you have any questions at this point? While while. Uh... Mm -hmm. Well, it. Yeah. So the context is definitely two x three and x four, where we don't. And we don't we don't have a we don't have a standardized API to do granular changes on a CD. Yeah, yeah. So this is like a like like I said, it's this is not a, like a really this is quite brute force. It works. I mean, we yeah we have we have uh, developed this uh, documents API. Uh, for CDs, but that only deals with uh, upload, download, and and updates of of, uh, of documents plus their metadata. So, so there is no like uh, we have taken. Yeah, yeah, we yeah developing a like a granular object level API that would be implemented by uh, lots of CDs. That's uh, that's a big challenge. So. <laughs> So the the words we're using. So if you anybody that's dealt with IFC long enough will realize that there's some there's some complications with, with what we're proposing. And the main the main thing is this idea that there you we're not doing any cleanup of relationships. So the way we're sort of conceptually looking at this is I publish a full file and I publish a partial. Um, and so let's say these are full P1, P2, P3. Um, in this model, the, the words we're using are very specific. That if you sequentially put these back together, at the end you wouldn't really have a conforming IFC file because what you'll have is uh, Dangling relationships, if you will, uh, you might get them. might might yeah, get it's, them. It's not guarantee. Yeah, if you're lucky, you have it. Right. If you're lucky. Yeah. So what we're saying is that the the real export here is in this process will guarantee you a sort of uh, the geometry and properties will be up to date. But if you dig deep, it's potential that you have relationships that are either orphaned on these steps. And so basically what our, our beginning instruction is to start to look like this, that every one of these needs to have their full set of relationships. So the idea that you can basically replace, if I have a, everybody likes the wall examples, so we'll use the wall examples. So I have that, you know, sort of condition two walls, and I extend on publish, you'd have to publish the two walls plus all the relationships and basically assume that everything else after that 
or everything that came before is abandoned. Yeah, you might also need to uh, publish the space that if there is a, yeah, it depends if, what are the, the, the really, so you kind of need to follow the relationships too. Yeah. Yeah. So when, and what we've, I mean, I've only tested this at Revit. We I've mm. built a prototype of this in Revit, but um, the change algorithms are very dependent on the applications. So the source applications can have change algorithms. So mm. like Posse is saying, Revit is very chatty because it, it will give you the rooms and the walls on either side and potentially uh, a door, you know, because the their internal update uh, algorithms, but we're not trying to specify any of that. So, mm. if your software, your, your software thinks a change has occurred, you update a part, you publish a partial. Mm. So far, so good. I got head nods. Yeah, yeah. all changes should be. Uh, if you like the changes, should be uh, implemented. Overall, it's not revision comes from. So, uh, you can create a different revision of uh, IFC stack. Yeah, it, it would be very confusing to do that. So we, we very much see this as a linear thing that you would, the, so the two discussions that we were having yesterday, and uh, Posse and David and I were talking through this, is there's, there's a, a way to package this up in a zip file, but that doesn't work perfectly with a CDE. So what we're, what we're really looking at is um, two equivalent proposals, I think, right now. Yeah, it's not mine. <laughs> I know, but this, this looks looks very formal. So um, the the two proposals are basically that we'd have a folder and a zip, and in the either one, what you'd get is the main file, a series of deltas, and a manifest. And it's basically just a text manifest. Man, can't spell. Um, and the manifest would be named exactly the same as the root, the the main file. So you could basically what the manifest will do for you if if you want to uh, externally understand this sequence versus looking at the headers, and we'll go what the headers will start to look like in a second. Um, that you can you can ask the manifest, and the zip will basically act, act in the same way. The reason we're using we think we need both is in the CDE use case, a zip is a horrible container because you have to send the whole thing around the whole time. But if you have a folder, you can do sort of incremental updates if you add new files. Um, but the manifest may, needs to be updated each time. Questions? Wait a second. Um, the IFC file, are all objects deleted, modified, or new? So it's a sort of complete set of everything. So we know exactly which are going away. Is that sort of the prerequisite for this? Yeah, so this, this, is, this is what we're, the added and, and uh, are sort of modified and new are in the IFC. That's pretty straightforward. So this partial. Oh, right, absolutely. I mean, this is, this is basically, we don't know what, if, if this is an implementer agreement or if this is more than that. Um, but the basics could be an implementer agreement. So the header is a couple of things. You need the document. ID, the document uh, version, I goes there, and then doc previous. So this tells you I'm part of it, and actually there's one more thing up top, it's a schema version, delta schema zero one. So you know what in the header, what version of the delta schema this is. And then the last item, yeah, is an array of deleted. Can't write, write that. Deleted. And then you just have the rest of the file. So basically this, 
with this, it is a duplicate of the manifest and we're stating this, but you have the version of the schema, I'm a Delta file, I'm version 01, the document ID of the, the model you belong to, the version of the model you belong to, the previous version, which is redundant, but it's, it, well, it's, it's redundant with the manifest, but it, it definitely helps you put them in sequence. Posse, you wanna? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can basically, oh. <laughs> basically just with the better information, you can uh, also put the, the, the uh, updates in the right order. So the delta is there just to, to give a shortcut. So if, you, if I say in Solibri I have, I'm in version three and then I want to go and see if there are any, if there are any updates, I can only uh, read the uh, manifest file and say that there are three updates after that. Uh, and then I can like the, let the user know that, okay, you need to choose these uh, files, these update files. And then, yeah, basically then based on the header information, Solibri can arrange the updates in the right order or any, any software that is, is reading the Delta. Tom. Uh, so can you put these back together into a valid IFC file at the end? That is up, up to the reading application. Like, but I think most of the use cases for IFC reading is for reference anyway. So I don't know if that the use case is such, there is such a use case that you would get a full IFC file and then also deltas and then you would want to export like the full IFC file. You could, but I think the full IFC files would come from the source. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You need to re-upload, but uh, this is uh, like uh, just uh, like how should I say? This is to improve the uh, efficiency of the uh, updates, so that you don't always need to upload the full IFC, but you can just get these uh, updates. And uh, yeah, every now and then, I think it's healthy to send the full update. What, what, uh, how about uh, shared geometry? If you share points between objects and other things, uh, it, it's cl clear that it works if you start from the native. But if you want to make a delta, like if, it's more concerning about editing IFC, which I think is a ba really bad idea. It shouldn't be done, but some people are still doing it. <laughs> and so, you, because you don't have the information, is that sharing intentional, semantic, or is it just happenstance sharing just to reduce the file size and how to deal with that? But if you, if you make the deltas from the, from the native, then you don't have that problem. Yeah, well, basically, you do. That's the assumption that you do the updates from a native yeah. uh, software. And the delta, as such, is uh, like a standalone full IFC. So it needs to be self containing all the geometries. That, so if, if, if it would be so that you, in the delta in the original file, the geometry of uh, the component was shared with another one. Then in the delta, of course, it has its own geometry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whether it's the same or not. So. Yeah, yeah. Native application knows the receiving application might be able to find out, but yeah. So we got a couple of questions from the audience, but go ahead. Yeah. So just to to walk through some of the questions, like, uh, I mean. Posse knows better on ARCHICAD. So uh, Solibri and ARCHICAD have been doing this. Oh, okay. Uh, with the JSON file. But what, what we, I found in the testing is, um, at least on like an example application like Revit, where uh, 
like this kind of change, like a level change will basically regenerate a whole model. So there are certain workflows you're absolutely just gonna wanna export the whole thing anyway. Our, uh, the number we've written down in talking about it, but we, we don't have a, I don't think it's formalized, would be like, you know, 20% change, 25% change, you might as well just do the full export because you're gonna do a lot of work on the, the partials. The other thing that we're proposing, and we have a doc that's written out, but it's not a formal proposal yet, is that these partials are uh, uh, dot uh, IFC delta. So they actually have a unique extension that you understand what they are because the header will tell you this, and then what we're proposing is just a, a naming convention for the primary, which is just to say uh, base, I think is what we'll, we'll, yeah, something like that, base dot IFC. So you have, in this package, you'll be able to understand which the, the file is based on, and you these deltas, they will be fully compliant IFCs, they just don't represent full, a full set of information that's meaningful because it's rather arbitrary what's inside them. So a couple of, and one question and one comment from the online audience. So the comment is from Andrew Bowman, um, pointing you to the paper written by Esser and Alia called Graph Based Version Control for Asynchronous Beam Collaboration, just FYI. Okay. And uh, the question is from Pedro. Uh, I understand IFC owner history is not considered strategic for, to track changes for the Delta approach. Can you elaborate on why? Well, before you, we talked about this a little bit in San Francisco at the General Assembly meeting. Um, people don't use it. But they generate, well, if they use it, they use it at the file level mostly, is what we've found. Yeah, and, and the other thing was that we wanted to put this meta information about the versions to the header so that you don't need to pass the whole IFC file. So you can just pass the header to get the information about the version in which order you need to uh, apply the updates. If you have all the updates, you might. If, uh, if you are unlucky, you might have missed uh, one update uh, when you have downloaded the files or something. So, so to make that process smooth, you don't need to pass the full up IFC file. You just pass the header, and then you have the information you need to do the update, uh, like at least the, in which order you, you need to do the updates and so on. Yeah. So. We have, we ha I don't think anybody's made a formal decision, but owner history has been long for this world for a while because nobody has been using it. Um, but I think there was like a throwaway comment that, well, maybe the owner history is useful in these partials, the way we're using it today. I, I don't know that there's much there, but we're not relying on owner, owner history for anything. So on the graph database comment, uh, absolutely, we're like long-term IFC5, we need to actually look at revision management and stuff. This is brute force. brute force, yeah. I think this was the main conclusion of the meeting in Santa Barbara that yeah, you mentioned, yeah, exactly. defining the scope of this initiative because anything else is, is for IFC5 discussions, which is a good link to the afternoon session we have an afternoon session, Greg. Right. I, I thought this one was at 1.30 and not 11.30, so, uh, or 11. 3.30 p.m. Right. Central European, in yeah. this very room. I will be here, I promise. And I'll, actually, I think, we, we actually asked that this was offline. It's not offline, but that we, we, the afternoon one will definitely be a working session more than this one, because we will have to just talk through the pieces of everything we're talking about. and. Drawing it is easier than talking talking through it or with PowerPoint. So, questions from anyone else? I have nothing else online. I'm giving people a couple of minutes to. So, I mean, generally, you know, this will need to be implemented by most people who want to render uh, or display IFC information, right? So, I mean, at some point, this is going to have to be useful uh, enough 
for vendors to implement the Delta approach or wait for IFC5 situations where this might be more, you know, agile or, or, or more uh, nicer to work with, you know, so what's, if, what's the sort of judgment here in terms of uh, real applicability in this time window between IFC4, IFC5? I, I, I actually think, I actually, hello? Um, so we're we're a little bit farther. I mean, okay. So let, let, we actually have one working implementation that's a slight modification to what we've discussed before in ARCHICAD. I mean, really, you're reliant on the authoring tools, and then this is relatively similar to what you would be doing if you ever reference an update today. It's just a smaller data set if you think about it that way. So from an authoring perspective, uh, both ARCHICAD can do something like this. We've built a internally at HOK, but it's open source, you can look at it. Uh, built, built a proof of concept that doesn't have this information in the header, it's just slightly below the header. Uh, everybody agreed and I didn't pay attention to what, what the rules were, so I just built, we built it that way. But at the end of the day, I don't think it's actually a hard, uh, hard lift to do this part. It's certainly on your application if you don't do updates, that's work, right? Um, you know, the use case of a Celebri is a no-brainer. They do updates, so if you update just a smaller data set, not a, not a hard implementation challenge. Um, IFC5 is, you know, we're at the point of, are we, do, are we doing the right thing or from a data structure perspective? So we're a long ways away of before we'll have all of this kind of stuff worked out, I think. Yeah. I was going to say one of the motivations for this was uh, feedback from our users that, you know, performance was a real issue. So I think, and IFC5 will be when our XC5 is, right? And then however long it takes for it to become the file format. You know, we've had IFC4 for how long now, and yet IFC2, X3 is still the most common. So I would say for any particular person who's thinking about implementing this, it really comes down to, is performance an issue that your users are facing? If it's not, then you don't need this. If it is, then this helps. Yeah, our, our good practice estimation is if, like, if you have a 50 meg file, this doesn't matter. Something like that. Thank you for this presentation, and um, I think uh, it's very interesting. And I and the group in Sweden, we work with a test bed, the platform based on PLCS for the whole life cycle, for the whole built environment. And we've been trying to have these delta imports, and we, do, we cut the links in the IFC files, so the whole, only the identities to the room, to the story, and then sensor data that we have created in Revit. We send only the sensors, and then they are connected to the correct wall and spaces based on the identities. And I think in the part 21 format, we should have the possibility to cut and not have all the objects that are linked in the relationships when you send it. So we, we can uh, modify this. And the, the advantage is, of course, that when it, if we can get a new version of something. We can check it in the platform if it exists already. And if it has been modified, then we know it's a new version. And the previous one is sort of just uh, not active, the relationships for that. So we have done a lot of that, but we base this on mapping IFC to PLCS. So everything is a part and a part version and the view for different disciplines on that version. And that everything is objectified and we sort of create new unique identities for those relationships and so that are not existing in the IFC model. So I think this will be very good for us also to have this delta in a very correct way. So we need all the deleted, all the changed and all the new objects. Yeah, and so what... Thank you. Cheer. Cheer. Okay, so to your point, uh, there is no, 
we, we, we can't tell you, we, and we don't think there's a decent way to do new versus changed. But obviously, if you have an ID of the previous item, it's a, not a new item, it's changed. The other thing is this, this only works for rooted items that have GUIDs. So as in uh, uh, inherits from, from root. So uh, there's a lot of stuff in IFC, like groups and these sort of things that don't have IDs. So you can only do this. But again, like we said, like if you, if you had a previous export that had a group with things have a relation to it, you'll have to do some sort of update, but the update will have you know the elements in that group, but you could have partials. So this is why it's not perfect. Okay, thank you, Greg. So uh, before closing, because we have two minutes before noon and then we need to head to lunch. Um, first, I want to apologize everyone in the room and home for the improvised session. Turned out to be quite interesting one with a lot of engagement from the- well, and, and let's be clear, Greg was late and forgot to charge his laptop. Yeah, as he said. Um, so again, no big deal. Um, so last question, I think it's actually a nice closing one for the session. Uh, you mentioned that next step is a proof of concept where you demonstrate all of these and maybe you capture some things. So maybe it's the answer to your favorite question, which is where do we find documentation on the proposed format? So we, we said yesterday we went through and actually put a Word document on Hell's hands were the typists uh, typing hands of this. So we have a Word document that outlines what we've just described. I think we got a, most of it right here. Um, we, we don't know the you know, is this an activity proposal or is this an implementer's agreement? I think it's a good question which one we think it is. I mean, I don't know, Angel, you could tell me what, what, what you think this looks like from a historical perspective, but... It... I think probably what we'll want to do is get it out there as, start as an implementer's agreement, make sure people get their input in. Sorry, I had to... Another meeting at the same time, otherwise I would have been here 75 minutes ago. Uh, but um, then I think we can discuss with Building Smart if this needs to go through a different process or not. But, uh, but at least get initial like 1.0 agreement. Yeah, at the end of the day, we're just proposing changes to a header and saying if you see this file, you know what it is. Yeah, for these type of things, that's why they're, uh, let's say, socialized and workshop inside this technical room because you are you are doers and from this type of initiative we, we want to have them as soon as possible and then we will go in parallel through the formal process of capturing documentation and so on. But uh, yeah, we're totally aligned on this need for speed. Yes. Oh. Okay. So we had a, not, a, good, a good half an hour? Oh, we, we, don't, we, don't have, we don't have any more. There's no more magic. So we, we could have had a half an hour session. So, uh, but any, any further questions or anything? Up to the audience. Up to you, Greg. Yeah, I don't need to talk forever. So. Yeah, so a lot of questions now. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be on the receiving side of one of those deltas. Uh, so there's no clear like specification for what is included and excluded. Like it might be Revit do, does one thing, uh, includes a bunch of stuff. Archicad does something else. Maybe it's more focused. So I kind of just make the best of it. Well, so let's just, there's actually a third implementation out in the wild, one based on Revit, but John Merchant has built a version that, um, so this is all, you know, this is all we're doing. What's in the file will be the, calculated changes based on whatever the host app, the, the authoring application thinks of the changes. John's approach is um, to do this in real time and then use a secondary check to say, well, is there actually changes here? And if not, I won't do things. So, you know, if you receive the, the main or the base file plus these deltas, it's, I mean, just like today, it's your, your ability to say, well, actually these aren't real changes. You can do uh, actual, you know, property level diffing, geometry diffing, these sort of things. But we're not, we don't have a good way to specify that, so we're not trying to. Right. So. Uh, 
So, so when we are, we are testing this, I think we need, we, are, we will find things and then we need to document like, okay, you might end up in this situation or something. So, of course, we should, if you find that this doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Or if you find that this only works in these situations, then we need to say that, okay, like these are like the best practice, this is the best practice to do it and so on. So we don't know yet. Of course, we try to make, make it as good as it can be. <laughs> okay, yeah, thanks. Another one here. Uh, so a couple questions. One, uh, you said that Dassault was one of the drivers uh, sort of requesting this. And um, so from a scope perspective, I'm interested in, in, in the perspective sort of from the, from the, the various authoring softwares of have we done any sort of, like, because of the constraints of the IFC 4 and 2, we can't really capture changes in relationships easily. And so when you've applied some deltas, you're in sort of a quasi-updated state, but it's not 100% tick up to date. Has anyone done any user testing about how people might react to that? It's like one more thing to think about, right? You've got like the green checkbox, your file's up to date, and then you've got a gray checkbox, is your file's mostly up to date. Um, is that, uh, the, 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 the fundamental question is, is this, is this, does this is this going to prevent like like from just so have they they had some use case some specific use case in mind does this meet that have they been involved in these discussions and 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 maybe from the from the Trimble or Autodesk perspective what's the is that I mean it's a constraint of 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 the tech right it's just uh, how much of an effect on the on the final solution well, does it have yeah I think maybe the biggest uh, test bed at the moment is the online or the communication between Archicad and, and Solibri. And in, in that use case, this concept has worked fine. So, but of course it's an architectural software. Uh, so if, if, for example, we apply this to, to mechanical software or something else, so we may find some things that, that, uh, that are problematic. Well, and especially when, in, when you, look to apply this to infra, uh, if everything's touching the, an alignment and the alignment changed, you have a new file, right? So there's certainly not, this is far from perfect. What we like to restate it and maybe Posse said, we think what you get is the geometry and properties are what you can rely on here. The, you know, the relationships and these sort of things. The, but I think Dussault's online and asked a question, I think it was Pedro that asked. Um, so uh, we'll have to find out, I suppose. Um, there, are, there are sample files. I'm not certain if they've done any uh, sort of investigation of the ill-formed headers, but we've, we've tested this thus far. But um, I think our estimation is most softwares don't flex the relationships. They use the properties themselves on the objects. So because of the inverses, you can, you know, you don't actually, mo most softwares, doesn't seem like import the relationship in the first place. So, uh, yeah. Second unrelated question. I was in the, the the BIM at law session yesterday, and they were talking about one of the big challenges is identifying change sets, and and all that kind of stuff. Has there been any coordination with the 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 legal group, working group about this? Um, and I, I, I you the way you've defined the scope, this is clearly out of scope. I'm just wondering if there's been any discussions with them of how this sort of thing might be helpful to them. There is not. I mean, the the I mean, you suggested this yesterday, and we can talk through this. That the idea that that the manifest could include hashes and these sort of things in the future, like a 1.1 version of this. So that that is not uh, how do you say this legally binding. It's just like. It, it tells you what you should have, right? Including a MD5 or something like that within there. There's a ongoing request um, in the US to solve this as well, like signing models. I'm not certain this gets us closer, but you know, at least one of the things that the, the initial discussion on this topic came up in Boston and the 
you know, the idea that once we start figuring out how to use zip well, so we have an IFC zip, but it's one file just using zip for compression, not for packaging. But if we're going down this path, maybe we figure out federation, maybe we figure out these sort of things in and make that container do a little work for us. So that's that's the best I can sort of point to right now. I mean, as far as signing goes, the fact that it is a zip does give us some flexibility, right? Because now you can put a signature in there where you can't really do that inside, you know, you could hide that next to an IFC file, but the zip can contain a SIG file inside of it, right? And that could even retroactively apply to IFC zip, just the old one that just has one IFC file in it. it could be one IFC file plus one optional signature. So. There's some, obviously, well out of scope of this, but there are possibilities there. Yeah, you're now making use of the header of the step file. Would it work in similar ways in other serializations, XML, uh, link data, JSON in the future maybe? Or do you have to you need extra agreements there to make it work there? Uh, I've never actually looked at these That's fine. Uh, I've never looked at the, someone else would have to has looked at these headers. Yeah, I mean, there, there must be, and there's an equivalent IFC XML header, right? So now, if, 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 you're, if you're manually parsing the file, that might be a bit of a problem because then you have to manually parse an IFC XML, which might be harder than a step. So there may be, hello, there may be some issues with that, right? Uh, but uh, I guess you were going to say something about that. Like uh, IFC XML is not used, is it? So, so I think this is now for the the, the like step physical file and IFC two x two and and four maybe four point three. And then in IFC 5, this will be rethought. Maybe the serialization format is different. So, yeah. Anyone else? Tom, you're smiling. Do you have a question? Oh, good. <laughs> uh, it's sort of confusing why we didn't do this earlier, because it's not that complex. Just one answer for your question, David, because uh, Pedro from Daso is online, so he's saying that in 3D experience, 3DS, we have started implementing the Delta import based on GUID and full IFC files, um, EI getting the complete file and only importing the objects that have changed compared to the existing version in the system, and uh, they expect to continue developing the solution over the coming releases, following closely the Delta topic to see how they can be aligned with other current approaches and to compare versions. Yeah, I was, and, and that's the interesting bit of the Delta. So, I mean, we do the exact same thing when we get a new linked file, right? We don't, we look to see, we only bring in what's changed, right? I mean, we only change, we don't, we don't re-import the file per se. We don't create a bunch of new things. But the delta allows us to just ignore everything that's not in the file, right? That's, that's the real performance improvement here. So, but it does mean that you need to deal with it differently. If we read in the delta file and thought it was a full file, we delete half your file when you were done because we just assume that it's all gone, right? And that's clearly wrong. So that's, the difference here is so that you do need to know it's a Delta file. You can't just assume it's a regular IFC file. Yep. Really Tom has a question from the room. Um, so earlier it was, I think this is a great idea uh, on its own, but earlier it was, it was said that, you know, if we want to do this right, we got to wait for IFC 5. Is that actually true? Because in the end, this is just a big graph. You can do versioning on a graph. Somebody linked a paper already. Do we need to actually wait for IFC 5 to get something that's, uh, you know, airtight in ter terms of versioning an IFC? 
Well, I think if you're doing from authoring tool using the, the existing uh, um, IFC libraries, probably. But yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, you you built these things externally. The com external comparison is something that people are getting quite good at. Given the fact that we wanted to make this quick to implement and so forth, like there's probably evolutions of this, and we can make it better in the future. How far it can go, but you're still reliant on, in this approach. If if the goal is speed on export and import, you have to have the change libraries in the authoring application or you have to have the change capability in the authoring applications to tell you what's changed. So. Yeah, okay, thanks. Anyone else? Let's see online. No? So, with 15 minutes left, yeah, we're gonna give you some advantage on lunch. Um, we can do the session. Any final remark? Thank you. Apologies Thank you, everyone, late. and see you this afternoon, 3.30. 4? Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>